This is the behind the scenes, kind of the making of the Crab Nebula animation that I posted on YouTube. If you have not seen that video, you're going to go, going to go want to watch it before you watch this. Everything I'm about to say will make more sense. One of the things that was absolutely critical for the success of that video was to be able to align these images more precisely than is typically done because of the fact that things from frame to frame are changing. Each of these frames has nine or 10 years between them or more between them. And that's enough that not only is the nebula changing, but the stars literally have moved from their positions. Now those motions are very, very small, but they are measurable. And if you use a more typical means of aligning these images, like if I just use the star alignment process here, in PixInsight, or what I actually did is I aligned this with another program. I tried to roughly align the images, the VLT image, with my two frames. Here are my two frames, one from 2021, another from 2012. When I tried to align these two, it didn't quite work because the stars had moved. And there's no way to tell the algorithm, hey, you know, ignore the moving stars and only align on the stars which are relatively fixed, which didn't move in that time period. Uh, so you're, you're stuck. You just can't force that software or that algorithm to somehow give you a different result. I'm going to show you in a moment how it's done in PixInsight. PixInsight offers a method that will allow you to get around this. Uh, but first, let me just mention a couple of things about the scale of the image here. Well, this is the actual scale of the VLT image. It's a 4,000 um, by 4,000 size image, but when displayed at this scale, you can see for me to make my image, you can see how the, the field of view is much larger here. The field of view of the VLT just barely fits the uh, Crab Nebula. So if we zoom in, we display this one-to-one -to, -one to make my image roughly the same size. I think I have to go like here. So it's basically a difference of three to one. So the VLT image is three times the image scale uh, that I was imaging at here. That means that my 4,000 by 4,000 pixel image here is going to be 12,000 or more pixels in size after it has been aligned. So one of the first things I did is I actually cropped around my field of view. And then I roughly aligned, as I said, using another program. I roughly aligned and it didn't work. It literally didn't work. So I can show you that it didn't work by putting these images one over the other and showing you the warps between the images. But I can kind of do the same thing here by showing you where the problem is, even by the method. So I'm going to show you the actual method I used, which is this is the original image. It's not aligned. There's, there's a rotation. There's a scale difference. It's completely different than this image is here. What you do is you go to a cool tool here that is called dynamic alignment. Now, another thing about these images that makes this, again, uh, difficult is that this VLT image is an already stretched image. So these stars are not like in a linear image where you get a nice uh, profile of, of what's called a point spread function. This, these white blobs are literally white, flat, no profiles, and so the software needs to center on them but without that star-like profile, it's actually quite difficult to do. So you have to choose basically small stars, but you can't choose the smallest ones here because they won't show up in my image. Uh, my image isn't as deep in that sense because of the resolution as the VLT image is. So you have these other little issues that you need to uh, worry about. Here's how it works. You click on the source image, that's gonna be the VLT image I chose, and then the target view is this one. And what you do is you end up clicking on stars, but as I say, not a terribly big one. You want to click on stars that are represented in both. So let's zoom in and actually find the same stars of some sort. If you look closely, let's, let's zoom out one step here so I can see. Yeah, you see there's a triangle here and there's a triangle here. Now these are at different angles, so there's a slight rotation. Obviously the scale is very different. But these stars right here are absolutely the same. So I would click maybe on this one here, and I say, that's my source, but where is it in the target view? It doesn't uh, light up that same star. And that's because it doesn't know yet. This dynamic alignment doesn't know the difference in scale and magnification and all that kind of stuff. So we actually need to look around this image and find where that, there it is, find where that sample square and ended up 
you need to do this for the first couple and then it will know the scale and rotation and all that kind of stuff. So now we bring it here and it'll snap to that star because it does do a centroiding to the best of its ability on these already stretched images. So we do it again. Let's click on another star. Maybe we'll click on this one, which should be that one. But once again, it finds, you know, it says it found a star, but it's not the correct one because we don't see the box here. Now we have to once again kind of look around. Oh, there it is. It's closer this time. And we put it over the same star. And now we have exactly the same two stars here. So let's again take another one in the source. Maybe we'll go with this one right here. Let's see if we go down here, if it's starting to figure it out. Look at that. Now it's got the same star. Isn't that cool? In fact, now it knows the difference in, this is actually enough, the three stars creates a triangle and that will um, determine your, basically your scale and rotation and then everything else are higher order terms, which is the warping that's necessary to get rid of distortions and other optical issues that does assume that we're not clicking on stars that are moving. And there's no way to know until we end up actually comparing stars between the two images. So I am going to just go very roughly here, clicking around. So we're going to click on stars, and I have some guarantee that they are going to show up here. You can see this one is matching here. Now you can click on ones that are in the nebula as well, but you've got to be a little careful because if they're involved in nebulosity, um, that's going to be a problem. So this one here almost looks like it's a double star, but I see it doesn't like it. So you've got to choose appropriately. Let's uh, see if I can pick one. So this one looks like a fine one. It looks like it's in between the nebulosity. And sure enough, if I come back here, it did pick it there, so there's no problem. So we go around the source frame here, and I'll just click on another star here. That one didn't look like it matched. Um, is it just not like that star? No, it likes it. I just didn't click very good. Let me show you another star here. Here, obviously, I'm not being very careful. We will click on something here. And we'll go up to this top corner, and this is where actually something is kind of interesting. I will click uh, on this one here. We'll click on this one here. I missed. Not very good clicker, am I? Uh, it's still, maybe that one's just too close to the edge. So we'll click. Oh, my goodness. I am trying. No, the star is no good either. And this is, again, because of the, the fact that the stars are kind of big and blobby. Go like that. Okay. So I call it good. Now we do the cool thing, which is to, we can verify that, it, you know, it's, we have the same stars up here in the top quadrant here. They do look, I see one, two, yes. One, two, and then one more over here to the left. Yep. Okay. So everything looks good. You hit the, the go button and we get our alignment. And now we can compare these two images. So I'm going to minimize this one. This is the newly registered version here. And this is uh, the version that we originally had. I think it's the correct size. So I'm going to close dynamic alignment for a moment. But actually, uh, before I close it, I'm going to do something for any of the PixInsight users. Save your little alignment stars so you can go back and edit them. <laughs> So that's the correct thing to do. But now I can compare these two images like this and blink them. Oh, I don't think I did that correctly. Do that and then blink them. And you can see the nebula changes, but if you look very closely up here at the top corner, you can see that one of the stars is moving. And I actually knew that in advance because I saw that um, there were stars that were not the same in that region. In fact, it's arguable that uh, this star here could be moving and maybe even that one there. So they're not always in the same position. Now, as we go around the image and we look at different areas, we may see that some areas are more aligned compared to other areas. Here you can see that there's a little bit of a warping, but it's not terrible. 
be, I will zoom in to a higher level here and show you that there is some warping that still remains. And one of the things that I had to do is to choose 80 stars instead of just a, such a small number of stars that I just demonstrated with. There we go. See how they're still shifting a little bit? That shift is enough to cause problems, especially if you're going to try to show some of these very, very small details, especially within the nebula itself. And I'll just look at some other quadrant here just to see how well it did. I suspect in the top left it's, it's probably okay, but just for fun, let's see. Yeah, top left is okay. So certainly I would need to add uh, some more points there at the bottom, but that is the process that I had to do just to get the images aligned in order that I could blink them well. So I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes on registration of images and this spe special case of what was necessary to make the Crab Nebula animation work.